with another edition of the Spiritual Medicine Digest. And today I thought I would start out with um, kind of like the five signs of spiritual maturity. Now there's probably a hundred signs, but uh, these ones I decided to share with you because they've been more recently um, just more relevant and um, I think uh, many of you will resonate with some of these. So I'm going to start off, at, and this is no particular order, uh, not in order of, uh, of importance or anything like that. Um, so spiritual maturity sign number one, you're okay with being wrong and being humble. <laughs> um, so what does this actually mean in the real world? Well, sometimes as we become more quote unquote un enlightened, um, we can get a little bit on our high horse and um, sometimes we're not really open to the possibility that maybe we're wrong or maybe our readings are wrong or maybe, you know, things don't work for everyone or, you know, we get sometimes into a rut as to what we think we have to do or what other people have to do. So if you, if you notice yourself thinking that way, like, well, this is the only way to do it, or um, there's no way these people are going to get better without doing X, Y, Z, or obviously, you know, you know, they're going to be sick because they eat GMO foods, or, you know, anything that is like that, black or white, um, eventually you're going to be proven wrong. <laughs> now you're going to think, how possibly? How possibly can we be proven wrong that GMO foods are bad, you know, bad for us? Of course they're bad for us, blah, 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 right? Now every single naturopathic doctor says it, it's bad for the gods, there's all this evidence, all this, you know, DNA, but I'm sure there will be someone who is completely impervious to GMO foods. And for them, it's not a big deal. Maybe they have evolved past that, maybe they can cancel out those frequencies. And we've already had lots of programs, including myself and Kathy Homer, uh, Nutritional Energetics, where we do that all the time. We cancel out these negative frequencies. Somebody has, uh, you know, uh, issues with EMF sensitivity. Well, guess what? We can pull those out. Even with the body code, we pull those out right out of their person. Those negative frequencies out of their, you know, out of their bodies. And then we can build their bodies up so they're uh, less likely to be susceptible to those things. So anytime we think we know for sure, that's the time we need to question. And the universe will help you by giving you some sort of challenge <laughs> that hopefully uh, test, uh, so to speak, that uh, you will pass. For example, if two healers disagree on, you know, a particular you know, person's healing or whatever, there's usually for each of those healers something to learn and something to evolve. But if one healer is open and one is not, then Oh, well, you know, that one, the other one that is not will give another opportunities to be open and to learn. So I think that if you're open to being wrong and you're okay with being wrong and being humble, that, that is a sign of spiritual maturity. I can't tell you how many, you know, people out there who are just so stuck in their ways and feel like, oh, my system is always perfect and there's never a problem and, you know, there's never interference or... Uh, I'm the most powerful one on the planet or whatever, you know, you know, <laughs> that's human ego, right? I mean, not to say that you aren't one of the most powerful people on the earth, but there might be something you still need to learn and then you will be given the opportunity with people and challenges and things in your life to bring forth that new awakening and new knowing. So that's one of the signs. So the other sign of spiritual maturity is you're grateful for all experiences. So this can be really tough, especially if, and that goes with my number three as well, so I'll say them both at the same time. So in addition to being grateful for all experiences, you understand that the other person, the one that is, you know, um, um, you know, criticizing you, traumatizing you, you know, whatever, <laughs> uh, that that is just another you. Um, and as Neil Donald Walsh says in his conversations with God, which I love that series, um, it's just you having a bad day. Why? Because supposedly we are all one, right? So we are all fractals and parts of the hologram. Uh, each of us have everyone in us. 
And I know that's hard to believe, especially when you have some sort of enemy, whether it be your parent or your sister or, you know, a healer who dissed you or criticized you or made racist remarks or whatever it is, okay? Um, that other person, if you can see yourself in them uh, and them in you, then really there is no other. The other is you. And so can we be in that place of forgiveness of self and others completely? Um, can we see them as not an other, but just us having a bad day, not being perfect? Maybe who we were and now we're not, and now we get a mirror to see who we were and who we are now. Or maybe that person was sent to you so you can see how quickly you get over it now compared to before. The universe gives you all sorts of opportunities. But it's really up to you to see that as an opportunity, not as an affront, not as a sabotage, not necessarily as something pulling you behind, but actually something pushing you forward. That is a sign of spiritual maturity. So in that way, we can be grateful, you know, for all the times that somebody complained, all the times that somebody criticized us, maybe not in the moment, you know, we're human in the moment, it's not comfortable. You don't say, gee, thanks for like, you know, thanks for shouting at me or whatever. No, no, I mean, it's not appropriate. But in the big scheme of things, once you're curious about, huh, I wonder why that happened. And don't just assume that it's, it's because they're a bad person or don't assume it's because you're a bad person, you attracted it. Okay, that's very simplistic thinking. We're going way beyond that now. So a spiritual mature person is going to be curious and go, well, that's really interesting. Hmm. So what is this? Is this a test to see if I am willing to forget faster than last time? Or is this a childhood tra traumatic pattern that still needs healing, that keeps happening to me over and over and over again, that um, there's something m more I need to address? Or is it something for me to witness, wow, I caught it really early that, you know, that this was not my stuff, this might be somebody else's stuff, and they're there to play this game with me so I can see how far I've come. Yay, thank you, you know? So whatever it is, um, you can be curious and then find that gratefulness as quickly as possible. We can't force it. You don't have to be in that place. You can't go, gee, I just oh, I want to be spiritually mature now. Please make me 100% spiritually mature. No, no, no. <laughs> you actually have to work for this, okay? You actually have to live your life and experience those discomforts uh, in order for you to shift and evolve. So um, another side of spiritual maturity is you see all the growth opportunities in the challenges. Yeah, so every challenge you have, and no matter how difficult it is, it doesn't mean you don't have negative emotions or sadness or anger. No, you're allowed all that. You're human, you know? But it's like, okay, so how is this going to evolve me? What is this really for? What's, what, what is the end game here? How does this really change me? For example, you know, if somebody is having a spiritual awakening and they suddenly get inundated with entities or, you know, they can hear them, they can see them, they're wrapped around their heads or whatever it is, can you be in that place, I'm not saying it's easy, okay, can you be in that place to see that, okay, I'm being challenged right now and I don't really know what to do with this and I'm open to help and I'm, I'm taking responsibility for everything that's happening to me right now. And, and how is this supposed to really grow me? You know, how is this really supposed to grow me? And to be curious again for that answer. Um, and amazingly, um, you will get it in some way, shape, or form if you're willing to truly listen to that. And this goes to the other spiritual maturity sign about seeing the other as you. Guess what? That includes entities. That includes demons. That includes darkness of the dark. Can you love them so much that they can't stand it anymore? <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's the fastest way, you know, for you to so-called get rid of them because they get a healing too. They need more love than, you know, somebody who's not troubled and not that low vibration. So instead of seeing me, you, them, us, you know, me against you, whatever, you're trying to sabotage me, whatever, you know what? They need help too. Maybe they're around you because... You're the one to do it. You're the one to love them so much that they heal, you know? So another sign um, of spiritual maturity is um, seeing the big picture and how everything can be reflected back into love. Everything. Yes, everything. Did I say everything? Everything. <laughs> yeah, everything. 
Um, this may not make much sense to you until you get that experience, but um, even the things that you think are the awfulest things to happen on Earth, the most traumatic, the grossest, the bloodiest, the whatever, how is this reflected in love? How is this improving love in some way, shape, or form? How is that evolving us into the love? Like, you know, I'll give an example. So, you know, I saw a report about a certain, you know, rare, I shouldn't say rare, uh, a small tribe of people in a country that it was their sport to, you know, trap a whole bunch of dolphins in a bay and kill them for food. Uh, but the way they trap them now, you know, was not like the ancient techniques where they would use a regular, you know, canoe or boat or whatever. Now they have motorboats, right? And they can actually corral all these dolphins in there and kill them. And, 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 and the whole area is blood. I mean, it's, it looks awful to me, <laughs> just like looking at this whole bay full of blood. Um, but it's, it's not like they're not using the dolphin meat, you know, like they're actually using it for food. That's how they feed their families and things like that. There's a lot of controversy, uh, of, you know, how humane this is or not humane. And of course there's the internet. So now these pictures are all around and you're like, how do I find the love in that? Well, guess what? That's your challenge as a spiritual warrior, as a light warrior and the spiritual nature will be able to find love in that. And uh, just an aside, as far as our lovely whale and dolphin friends, who probably are not originally from Earth, um, some of them do sacrifice themselves. It's a beautiful thing, but it, it's sad as well, because they're just so loving. But they sacrifice themselves, so we can evolve. So maybe those of us rise up and go, wait, 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 this, no, 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 this, there's a better way than this. You know, how can we find that? So anytime you see in the news, things going on in the world that make you hate another, make you judge another. Um, that's you in the small picture, not seeing the big picture. Okay. So seeing the big picture always comes back to love and the so-called other who try to detract the dark side is always trying to pull you into that back into that polarity of me versus them, good versus bad and lock you into that. But if you can see the big picture of how it brings us, closer and closer to love and some of them are just opportunities to be uh, in the love then um, you'll live a completely different life and you'll view everything completely different and you'll have a great sense of peace so those are my uh, current uh, top five signs of spiritual maturity so I'll go over them again if you're really willing to be wrong and be humble um, you're grateful for all experiences even the challenges um, you understand that the other is just another you, maybe having a bad day. You see all as growth opportunities, and you take self-responsibility for that. And um, uh, so even if there are challenges, you know, uh, you welcome them or you accept them. Um, and then you get to see the big picture and how everything is reflected in love. And maybe that is your spiritual mission, to be able to do that. Okay, so uh, I do have a question from folks that I think I'll answer in today's Spiritual Medicine Digest, which is um, now that we have uh, this awesome God team, right, this, the spiritual team with um, high level, you know, infinite healing powers with 100% love, light, and truth. We talked about that last week uh, of how important that is. So why am I still having problems? Okay, so somebody might ask, so why am I still having the symptoms? Well, um, it really depends on your soul's wish to evolve and how it wishes to evolve. Now, some of you have already, because you're an old soul and you are a healing type three and four, there's um, four major healing types, one, two, three, and four. The threes and fours have the highest responsibility. And uh, you can learn more about that on my website, karencan.com, and watch the free video there. So the threes and fours, guess what? You've already done the easier lessons in your other timelines. Okay, when your soul was a bit younger. So you actually have to be even more spiritually aware and spiritually self-responsible, responsible, um, to, you know, do your soul's mission. And that means sometimes the God team is asked by source to wait until which time you ask the right question, until which time you ask the questions and discover the right answer, which gives you the aha. And at that point, you ask the God team, they move in and they do the healing. Um, so yes, the God team does most of the healing, but for some of us, it is required for us to do some of the troubleshooting. Why? Because we're an evolving soul. Just think about it. You know, if everything was ever done for you all the time, if, since childhood, 
Would you ever learn to feed yourself? Would you ever learn to cook? Would you ever learn to go out in the world and earn a living? No, no, no. I mean, it's like me as a, you know, figure skater, um, having a wonderful coach and a, and a team, right? I have this, all these coaching teams. They're coaching me. They're, they're giving me the best of them to learn how to skate well, but I still got to do the practice. I still got to go to the ring. I still got to be in there in that freezing ring doing the work, right? Otherwise, how am I supposed to compete? How am I supposed to, you know, have a beautiful um, program uh, done on the ice? The work is still up to me. So don't be mad or upset that your God team is not doing their job. They are. <laughs> they just know when and where they are best utilized and when and where they are allowed to be utilized uh, by you for your highest and greatest good. So I uh, hope that is helpful. Um, so uh, next, uh, actually, I did want to share with you June 22nd. Um, there is a call, and for those of you that are seeing this after June 22nd, there will be a replay, of course. Um, I'm doing a self-hosted call with From Heartache to Joy about the ascension process, about some things to expect. Um, there's been a lot of questions and um, frustrations, I have to admit, about this whole, like, why is my body doing this thing, you know, for <laughs> during the ascension. And some of these answers are just not published anywhere, so I'm going to be sharing with you some of my intimate conversations with Source and what is uh, seemingly really going on, especially with our physical bodies, during this time of transition and ascension. And we're going to be doing some group healing activations on the call live tomorrow. Also some mini healings. So if you have an urgent problem, I really want you to be on the call uh, June 22nd, 11 a.m. Eastern. Join us. If you don't know, you know all the login and information, you should be on my mailing list. Uh, it was already emailed out to you. Uh, if not, uh, you could also be on the From Heart to Joy's mailing list, which is karencan.com forward slash FHTJ, which stands for From Heart to Joy, and be on their mailing list as well so you get alerts of uh, for this. Uh, we're ending the Series 14 fairly soon, so um, this is one of the last uh, calls for this particular series that's live, uh, and then it'll be replayed. So I want you to join me because we're going to be talking about uh, ascension and doing the healing group activation. So if you are suffering from you know, autoimmunity, pain, sleep deprivation, you know, boundary issues, depression, anxiety, I want to hear from you. And so let's get some of this handled for you. Okay. So, and, uh, so that's June 22nd, uh, the Thursday after that. On Monday, I have the wonderful uh, opportunity to speak with uh, David Schmidt, CEO of LifeWave, about the new patch I'm wearing today, the Nirvana patch, which helps with beta endorphins. We'll get kind of the sciencey background of how it can help you feel better and be happier. I always joked with David that he's got to make a happy patch, although the Eon patch is a happy patch for many people with inflammation-induced you know, depression or anxiety, uh, but uh, symptoms. But uh, in this case, uh, this is literally the happy patch, but it also may have other areas of um, crossover, including possibly hormonal balance, uh, hair regrowth possibly, um, with uh, pain relief. You know, so we're gonna talk about those things and you're more than welcome to call in and ask some questions of David live on Monday, 3 p.m. Eastern. If you're on my mailing list, we'll send out that link to you to get to the radio show on Monday. Okay, so that's Spiritual Medicine Digest for this week. Have a wonderful rest of the week. Bye for now.